Everything slows down. You desperately try for one last kill. Victory! Breaks across the screen. The match is over, but now everyone, no matter if they won or lost, waits eagerly to see if they got the coveted play of the game. Some players have a lucky headset, others only pick characters with high play of the game chances. But we here at Leaderboard want to give you our best advice, tips, and tricks to secure you your 15 seconds of fame. Whether you're a Hanzo main, a pinch healer, or the pillar of your team, that is Orissa, we've got something for everyone here. After watching this video, you should have a better understanding of what Overwatch weighs in a quality play of the game and what you can do to get your highlight up there for all to see. Hi, I'm Kyle Stover or Alf Lance on Twitter with the leaderboard and we're gonna break it down for you as we unlock Overwatch's play of the game. Let's get started. <laughs> Number one, stand with your team. First and foremost, every character plays a little bit differently. Their abilities playing into each team composition and every map a little bit differently. Of course, across the board, we feel safe in telling you not to try to lone wolf all the action by yourself. Everyone wants to be that Reaper who sneaks behind enemy lines and drops a perfectly centered Death Blossom for a team wipe, but more often than not, you're going in with no backup, no healer, and no one to keep the enemy fire off of you. Sticking with your team allows for solid combos and better supporting abilities. Especially with characters who have aggressively forwardly offensive ultimates, you'll likely pick off more enemies if they're caught off guard and distracted by your teammates. Characters like Junkrat can do a lot of splash damage, and if you're a pinpoint shooter like Soldier 76, you can clean up targets without even having to activate your ultimates. Participation in kills still count towards your eliminations compared to a final blow or a solo kill in other games, and will still lend towards your highlight being picked. It may mean your play of the game is a little bit of a group effort, but the glory is still yours for the taking. Number two, save a teammate, kill a cowboy. One of the categories considered for play of the game is Lifesaver, which focuses on deeds done that save a teammate from the jaws of death. Keep an eye out for flanking McCrees, charging Reinhardts, or other immobilizing characters looking to pick off your healer or front line. Watching their back and being ready to act when an enemy stuns or pins a teammate will not only make you a superstar in their eyes, but add some valuable weight to an elimination. Be ready to drop a defense matrix, throw up a barrier, knock back an enemy, or spring a bear trap at a moment's notice. Once again, sticking near your team helps them help you make the plays that matter. Number three, go streaking with your kills. A more direct way, of course, is to try to land those fast kill streaks and multi-kills. Picking your targets carefully and knowing who to take out first is important. Try to focus down a beefy tank before turning on their squish your teammates, as well as taking out any healer right away. It's not enough you just get eliminations without dying. You have to string them together back to back for this to boost your chances. Characters like Symmetra and Zarya can charge up their attacks before actively engaging the enemy, so take a moment to prepare before jumping in. An important point to keep in mind is that your kills will count for more the closer you are to the objective, as this will affect your high score, the score. You may get multiple kills camping the spawn zone for a bit, but it will be way less than another character on the payload getting a few quick kills back to back. Number four, don't bring a sniper to a tank fight. If you're not getting many impressive kills or you're not doing much at all, take a second and look over your team composition versus the enemy team composition. Take a second, look at your team. Look at the enemy team. Now look back at your team. Now look back at the enemy team. Maybe you'll notice something. Picking a solid counter can switch things up and allow you to get the jump on unsuspecting heroes that were previously thwarting your every attack. Is the enemy going triple tank? Reaper it up. Tear through those big meaty targets. Fast squishy characters darting around? Go May and ice them in their tracks. Could your team use a spray and pray defense character to soften the enemy up? Or would a more mobile flanker let you chase down damaged enemies and finish them off? Would maybe a giant gorilla with electric cannon be able to jump on some faces and do some damage? Just throwing out some ideas. You'll want to compare your picks to the enemy's current heroes so you can see what will combo together nicely and give you the advantage. While being on the winning side doesn't ultimately decide who gets play of the game, it does usually mean that your team is coming out on top for most team battles. Number five, the C word. A point we can't say enough no matter how many videos we make. Communicate, communicate, communicate. While in quick play, you can get away with no miking it, and just doing your own thing, but in higher levels, it pays to keep your teammates in the loop. 
Is your ultimate ready? Does anyone else have their ultimate ready? Are you going to drop your Earth Shatter and break their front line? Are you in a position to drop sweet missile justice from above? Talking in team chat allows your teammates to get into position and support your effort. If not, at least keep unnecessary ultimate stacking. Nothing like a bro shield right as you activate your transcendence before your team gets onto the point to make you feel like you built up your Q for nothing. At the very least, it helps to double tap your Z key to notify your team that you have your ultimate and you're going to be using it soon. Or if you're a console pleb, you can go through that annoying command wheel thing. Characters like Ana can maximize their ultimate and your ultimate if they know that you're going in for the push versus when you're going to retreat. Nothing like Nana boosting a Farah who runs back for a health pack because no one communicated. Your mother is disappointed in you, Furiha. Number six, justice reigns from blah! Similar to Lifesaver, you can get weight for your play of the game by shutting down an enemy ultimate. The Overwatch algorithm calculates how much impact, read, damage done, or potential eliminations was neglected by your actions, such as sniping a Lucio as he's about to drop his ultimate, thus allowing your team to wipe his unshielded teammates, or taking out a Reinhardt who just dropped an Earth Shatter, allowing your entire team to get back up like nothing happened. A shutdown score is a little trickier to land as you have to be aware of the telltale signs of an incoming ultimate or attack and be a character who can properly react in time. Characters like McCree and Junkrat televise that their big attack is coming, whereas with characters like Reinhardt and Mercy, you have to be quick to catch them. Others like Soldier 76, Reaper, and Farah launch their attacks, but give windows where you can still shut them down or negate their damage swiftly. Diva's Defense Matrix on a Sleep Dart, Symmetra's Barrier can all be dropped to negate or stop incoming damage and save your teammates from the long walk back from spawn. Number 7. Stack the Advantage Wombo combo this ultimate for maximum damage. A Soldier 76's tactical visor has been nano boosted by an Ana tears through an enemy team like a hot knife through butter. Frozen enemies are going to have a hard time getting away from a nuking mech. With 24 characters and so many unique abilities, the possibilities are ripe for creative teamwork to rain down damage on your enemies. Don't overlook non-ultimate attacks either to help keep your ultimate formidable. A Sombra can hack the enemy Ana, so no sleep dart for you, ultimate. A well-placed ice wall from May can keep targets from retreating, or raise you up for a better vantage point. Practice with your friends, and be ready to coordinate big attacks for a solid team wipe that you can take all the way to point B. Number 8. These maps were made for flanking. One last category that the play of the game algorithm looks at is Sharpshooter, which values high skill kills and difficult feats. Taking down enemies with finesse takes practice, but landing headshots and hitting very mobile targets will pay off any way you cut it. Standing still or attacking stationary enemies won't weigh as much as running and gunning your way through jumping faras and zipping tracers. Get good is sort of limited advice, so we'll take it a step further and talk about when and where to engage the enemy team. All of the maps have a certain focus, a main lane of action. Whether it's the one and only control point on the map or the path that the payload will take, there's a certain flow of movements and attacks. Be aware of what areas are better to be holding or falling back from and keep your eyes open for possible paths to flank or blindside opponents. A rip tire rolling down the main lane will likely be wrecked well before it gets anywhere near an enemy. So remember that the tire can climb and take less obvious routes. Ducking in a side room and jumping out behind the enemy formation can let you rain death down where they least expect it. Always be looking for ways to get around their defenses and disrupt their attacks. With high damaging attacks, catching a backline off guard and unprotected makes for a strong contender for that match's play of the game. Number 9. Ode to the support play of the game. Last, but definitely not least, we're going to dedicate this one to the support characters out there looking to get more than just a card for keeping their teammates alive. Dropping a pinch transcendence or a five player res is of course one of the most prominent ways to get your highlight intro played. Stepping back from that though, keeping a teammate alive through an intense battle and knowing when to throw down your own attacks can set you up for some glory as well. Each hero has their own unique skills that they can leverage for some sweet post-match highlight, whether it be a Lucio booping enemies off the map, Zenyatta laying down some smack on an opposing tank, or Mercy whipping her gun out and turning the tables on a would-be flanker. It's important to not lose sight of your role as a support in favor of personal glory, but keeping all of your abilities in play will benefit you over just being a pocket Mercy for your friend the whole game. You also want to be aware of your surroundings and know when it might pay to just hold on to your ultimate over a desperate play to res your fallen team. At best, you might waste your ultimate on a push that was never going to succeed in the first place. At 
at worst, you might actually feel an enemy player's play of the game when they cancel out your ultimate or get a multi-kill for taking down one of your newly rezzed friends again. Gold medals and high damage isn't always enough, so keep track of how often you are getting kills and the difficulty in said kills. Though we've all seen a Torbjorn get play of the game while our Swedish friend is staring at a wall, most play of the game highlights factor in a lot of different skills and variables. So don't be discouraged if your awesome triple kill gets totally passed over for a Lucio pooping two enemies off the map. I'm your host, Kyle Stover, or Alpha Lance on Twitter. Connect with me online. Thanks for watching Unlocking Overwatch Play of the Game. Comment below and tell us your best or worst play of the game that you've ever had. And we'll be watching for your sweet, awesome montage of highlights to come. Click the bell icon to become part of the notification squad. And remember, if you like getting more from your games, subscribe to the leaderboard, where we help you game smarter.